Today I'm going over some of Psalm 102. And as always, I pray the Holy Spirit gets this to the right person at the right time. Starting in verse 1. Hear my prayer, Lord. Let my cry for help come to you. Do not hide your face from me when I am in distress. Turn your ear to me when I call. Answer me quickly. Now, God is always there. God is always seeing and hearing everything that's happening. He hears you. Sometimes it doesn't always seem like it. Sometimes it seems like God is silent. But personally, I don't believe that God is ever actually silent. When it seems like God is silent, one possibility is that he's actually whispering. And what do you do when somebody whispers? You lean in closer so you can hear them. Verse 3. For my days vanish like smoke, my bones burn like glowing embers, my heart is blighted and withered like grass, I forget to eat my food, in my distress I groan aloud, and am reduced to skin and bones, I am like a desert owl, like owl among the ruins, I lie awake, I have become like a bird alone on a roof. We're going to go through difficult times, and throughout all of Psalms throughout the entire Bible, really, but Psalms especially, the author was going through a wide range of emotions whenever he was writing these down, writing these Psalms down. Just like today, we go through a wide range of emotions too. Verse 8, all day long my enemies taunt me. Those who rail against me use my name as a curse. For I, shall, for I eat ashes as my food, and mingle my drink with tears, because of your great wrath. For you have taken me up and thrown me aside. Sometimes it seems like God has forgotten us, but really, he hasn't. He never does forget us. There's Even if we don't see it in the moment, sometimes it could take weeks, months, years, or many, many years. In some instances... But God never allows anything to happen without a good reason, even if we don't see that reason in the moment. And one thing that's really comforting for me anyway is whenever there's a difficult situation, some people would think, God, why are you allowing this? But that's just it. God is allowing it. God could have it fixed just like that, but God is allowing it. He is allowing it. Then that's the God that I serve. Let's see, where was I? Uh, verse 11. My days are like the evening shadow. I wither away like grass. But you, Lord, sit enthroned forever. Your renown endures through all generations. And that's something that we really need to get better at. Some Christians in general... The author was going through this wide range of emotions. God, I'm going through this. I feel this. I see this. I hear this. And yet in verse 13, despite all that, he's praising God. And that is very important. If you can learn to praise God in the storm, you can learn to praise God regardless of the situation. God sees that. Let's see. No, sorry, that was verse 11, my bad. Verse 12. You... Okay, I'm getting mixed up here. Sorry about that. Verse 13. You will arise and have compassion on Zion, for it is time to show favor to her. The appointed time has come, for her stones are dear to your servant. Her very dust moves them to pity. The nations will fear the name of the Lord. All the kings of the earth will reveal, revere your glory. For the Lord will rebuild Zion and appear in his glory. He will, he will respond to the prayer of the destitute. He will not despise their plea. God doesn't always answer our prayers. And usually when God hears our prayers, there's one of three answers. Yes, no, not yet. When God says yes to your prayer, there you go. You got what you prayed for. When God says no, 
That means he has something better in store for you than what you're asking. And when God says not yet, he wants to give you what you're praying for, but right now is not the best time for it. Remember Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. As the heavens are above the earth, so are God's ways above our ways, and God's understanding are, is above ours.